Ah, oh, don't you just love the smell of a new Pokemon card set? Paldea Evolved. It's the latest Pokemon card expansion featuring illustrations by new and returning artists, as well as a slew of playable cards for the next format of the Pokemon TCG. Now, the most important part of this set coming out is that all the cards in it are going to be legal for the next massive, probably the biggest Pokemon card tournament of all time, uh, NAIC. This will be held June 30th in Ohio, the US of A, which I'll be going to. So I'm going to need a whole bunch of the cards from this set. Top of that, I am going to be chasing really cool special special art illustrations like Iono, Chien Pao, Grusha, my absolute beloved. And before I forget, a big thank you to the Pokemon company for sending this box my way. That was very cool. Thank you. Being the second expansion of the Scarlet Violet block, we are going to see a whole bunch of very playable cards. They're going to shift the meta significantly. We got Pinkachin, Dino, Magikarp, which is actually a very nice illustration. I saw this in the Japanese set, Snow Hazard. This one is illustrated by Hyogonosuke, and there is a very nice art rare as well. There's gonna be probably be one of the big chase cards from the set. Slowpoke by Soso. This card is also beautiful. Paldean Taurus. You know, I played the game, but I didn't even realize that there were different elemental types of Paldean Taurus. There's like a normal one. You got a fire type, a water type, and an electric type. You gotta be careful not to say lightning because in the TCG, it's not actually electric, it's lightning. You got Practice Studio. This stadium's not that great. The attacks of Stage 1 Pokemon do 10 more damage to the opponent's active Pokemon. Both players can make use of this stadium, but because it only applies to Stage 1 Pokemon and it's only 10 more damage, it's a pretty weak stadium. Florigato obviously evolves into Miascarata EX, which is gonna be a pretty strong card. The Murkrow Reverse by Tezero. This is a fantastic illustration. Tezero, absolutely been tearing it up since 2021. And Glimit. Oh, wait, oh. Oh, I did it wrong. I, I always forget how the pack trick works in this. So we got Chiyu EX. This is our first secret rare. This is a secret rare, isn't it? Now, I don't think this card is very playable, but it does have a very nice SAR, arguably one of the best SARs from the set. So with a bit of luck, we might see that today. Sandy Ghast, Tarantula. So they're back again. Another Murkrow. Mistrevious. I think this is probably one of the best arts from the set. This one actually blew me away. Miss Major is a pretty sick Pokemon. Mistrevious, though, seems to always get really, really nice cards. This one is by Megumi Higuchi. Just a fantastic, just like a really nice illustration all around. Talonflame, they're back again. Heracross, this one's pretty sweet. I'm pretty sure they got an art rare in this set, too. Kilowatt Troll, never been a fan of that Pokemon. Crocolore. Chiyu EX, that's kind of sus. You guys are going to be like totally scripted. You fully set that up. One of the massive improvements SARs have brought to English sets is the introduction of more glitter. And you can see that is on full display here with the Akira Egawa illustrated Chiyu EX. You got layers of texture and layers of glitter on top of each other. It's a really, really nice touch. English TCG texture has definitely improved. It's not on the same level as Japanese sets, but it's getting very close. I hope to see an improvement over the next couple of years. That is very beautiful. Oh, and there was another hit. I was about to just wrap that whole thing up, but no, we've got another SR. So in the first two packs, it's Giacomo. For those of you that are not cultured with the Italian language, I have Italian heritage, but I don't even speak it. It's Giacomo. Please, nobody say Giacomo. That's not how you pronounce this guy's name. Now, as a supporter, Giacomo, it's okay. I feel like it's one of those quirky cards that you might see in rogue decks or maybe control decks. Discard a special energy from each of your opponent's Pokemon. So special energy intensive decks like Lugia Vista are going to be really susceptible to plays involving Giacomo. You can remove double turbo energies from play, but more specifically gift energy, meaning if you knock out that Pokemon, your opponent is no longer able to draw a massive amount of cards on their next turn. This is going to be one of those 50 minute pack openings, isn't it? Where I just keep talking through everything. Shinx, the ability big raw. Once during a turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, may, you may switch out your opponent's active Pokemon to the bench. That's actually quite an interesting card. It's a way to gust your opponent without using the supporter like boss's orders. It's a decent effect. You might see it in a couple of quirky decks here and there, but not bad. And a really nice illustration too by one of my favorites, Kurumitsu. You got Nimble, Mischief, Luxio. There's a Luxray in this set that is very good. Mabastiff, Pupitar. There's a really nice Tyranitar art rare too. Krogunk. Lit Leo and a Glamora. One thing I'm trying to do more and more these days is read literally every card. I feel like players that know every card have just an instant advantage over other players because you know instantly like the interactions and what certain cards do. You're not getting shocked in the middle of a match. Mankey, Grusha, this is a new supporter. One of my favorite characters from the game, even though they didn't really get fleshed out that much. The design is just fantastic. Draw cards until you have five cards in your hand. If none of your Pokemon have any energy attached, draw cards until you have seven cards in your hand. So that's an excellent draw supporter. I don't know how much play it's going to get. I've seen it in a few decks in Japan, but it has potential. It's not an entirely bad card. You have the Miss Magus, which is equally as good as the Mistrevious, but I still think the Mistrevious has one over it. The Bramblegast. Calamitous. 
Calamitous Cal Cal Snowy Mountain. Let's just call that Snowy Mountain. Gothita and Saguaro. So we've got two supporters, two full art supporters out of this set. You do want to see uh, the Iono because that is going to be one of the most powerful cards in the TCG once we move into the next format, but you just can't look a gift horse in the mouth these days. Saguaro is a bit of a tech card, meaning you'd probably only run one of it in your deck and use it very, very late game. For example, if your Archeops are about to be knocked out by Sableye's Lost Mine, you can remove the damage from them, blocking that play from your opponent. I gotta say that has to be one of the most stacked starts to a booster box opening I've ever, ever had. Noibat, there's a cool Noivany X in this set, Sprigatito. The Quaxley, Sharkadet. I keep saying Sharkadet, but it's pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's Sharkadet. Electrode, Vigoroth, Pingachin. That is a really nice card. That one is by Miki Kudo. I'm a big fan of that pop art style with Pokemon cards, and I love the contrast of colors with the scarlet and the deep purples of Pinkachin. It's a style of card. It's really similar to Kuramitsu that just really just does it for me. Kufant. I feel like they're in every set. Mischief and the Slow King EX. So we aren't seeing different types on Terra Pokemon just yet. We're still getting Psychic on Psychic types, even though you could argue Slow King has like that water. Anyway, the point is Terra Pokemon, the only effect they seem to have so far is if they're on your bench, they prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attack. So it's safe on your bench. But so far the Terra Pokemon haven't really had a big impact in the TCG. We're hoping to see that change in the next couple of sets. One thing that a lot of Pokemon card players were looking forward to is the introduction or the return of comeback mechanics in the game. And we we are starting to see them flow through in this set specifically. Hopefully we can pop some of those cards today. We got Fukoko, Bramblin, Kilowattrel. Again, not the biggest fan of the of the Kilowattrel. Azumarill. This is interesting. It's illustrated by N. Morakura, who has only illustrated a few cards, and their last card was the Aroma Lady from Evolving Skies and Eevee Heroes. So they are back and they're a phenomenal artist over in Japan. One of the most popular artists, I guess, on Twitter, where they're mostly popular and like stuff like Pixiv. Emorakura is very, very talented. Uh, they're back drawing Pokemon cards, but a really random Azumarill, the delivery drone. I don't think this card's very good. Flip two coins, both are head, search your deck for a card and put it into your hand. Uh, that sounds like it could replace Chromomatic, but you're gonna flip two coins. Oh, that sounds terrible, actually. Pineco. And we got a Mimikyu. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon EX and V. It's not that good. I told you guys, I'm on my read every card arc. It's not going to stop with the Mimikyu. We got Rookie D, Magnemite, Phalanx, Komi, Dendra. So Dendra's SAIs in this set. This is one of the chase collector cards. It was a big chase card over in Japan. But what does it actually do? Let's have a read. Put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck. If you do, draw cards until you have five cards in your hand. Put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck. I'm trying to think of where that would be good. Dendra seems like a good alternative to Professor's Research. If there's a card that you don't want to get rid of, you want it back in your deck, but you need to see more cards that turn, you can play Dendra provided your hand is relatively empty. The Raichu, Flechinda, and Paldean Wooper. This is our first art rare. A very cute card. I found this just the other day in Japanese. This one's by Miki Tanaka. You can see Paldean Wooper is just low key hiding in the mud there. And a low kicks. Not a big fan of that Pokemon. I'm not going to lie. Low kicks just gives me really weird vibes. And I keep forgetting the name. It's like a mix between Loki and Jetix, that Cartoon Network programming from like a decade ago. Tinka Tink. All the, the whole Tinkaton line looks absolutely stunning in this set. I would have liked to have found the SAR Tinkaton, but we'll see. There's still time. Glimmit. Corviknight. They're in every set. So Viper. Paldean Taurus. There's another elemental type of Taurus. We've got Relor. Clavel. This guy's a big... I don't like him. Just a dweeb. And Weevil. Man, I forgot how big English sets are. There are a lot of booster boxes to go through here today. There's the Lit Leo. Rockruff. Pormi. They're in the last set. Give Pormi a break. This is Haru Akasaka. This is a new artist that I just noticed a few days ago. They have a really distinct art style. I'm pretty sure they illustrated the Oracorio in this set, which is actually a decent card. So hopefully we can find that. But I'm really liking how their Pokemon illustrations are really simple. Like there's not a whole lot of shading, but their backgrounds are ultra detailed. And it just gives this card the effect of, I guess, Lavatar sort of popping out into the foreground. The background just looks so vibrant and detailed. There's a really cool technique there to make Lavatar just like pop out at you. We've got Quaxwell, even though they're just sitting there, but you know what I mean. You, you get the vibe. Delivery Drone. We've got Farigaraf, Rookie D, Practice Studio, and Wo Chien EX. There you go. So we have another one of the legendaries here. The X cards look so sparkly. I gotta say though, the Japanese ones have just extra pop, but you get these under the right lighting conditions. It's not bad. Wo Chien EX, I don't know how good of a card this is gonna be, but when I see Wo Chien, all I can think of is live Wo Chien reaction. It is, it's solidified as a meme Pokemon for me. Really hoping to see something like Ting Lu, maybe a Chien Pao, maybe an Iono if we're feeling a little cheeky, Kufant. 
Krogonk, Chitotal, this Pokemon. I mean, I get it. It's like a walking whale, but it's just not, it's quite, it's just, it's unsettling. All right. That's what we're going to go with. We're going to go with unsettling. Shrewdal, Ice Q, I know. Here we go. Here we go. We need to hit this, all right? I know. Each player shuffles their hand and puts it on the bottom of their deck. If either player put any cards on the bottom of their deck in this way, each player draws a card for each of their remaining prize cards. This card has so many applications that honestly, it probably deserves its own video, but let's just stick with the best one. Let's say your opponent has game in hand and is going to win on the next turn. They've got one prize remaining, so you play I know, forcing them to draw just one card. You find exactly what you need to get a knockout on that turn, and they draw into nothing. From there, they've got no option but to pass completely reversing the title of the game, giving you the win. So if you're looking into playing and you're opening up Paldea Evolved, if you find this, you must hold on to it. It is a massive card. We got Knuckle Stack, Vesper Queen, Frigibax, and Bax Calibar. Hello, hello, hello. These two Pokemon form the strongest new engine in Paldea Evolved. Frigibax on their own doesn't pose much of a threat, but together with Bax Calibar and the ability Super Cold, you're able to attach as much water energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon during your turn as often as you like. And if you fast forward that evolution with Rare Candy, all of a sudden, you're flinging water energy like there's no tomorrow. I've got three water energy in my hand. I evolve the Frigibax using Rare Candy into Bax Calibar. I use the ability Super Cold, putting all three water energy straight to the Greninja and then attack my Manaphy-less opponent with Moonlight Shuriken to take the win. That's what we like to call energy acceleration. So those are easily the best reverse holo and rare holographics we have found so far. I'm telling you, in this day and age, you absolutely cannot bypass any rare card that you find. Sandy Gas, Tarantula. There are so many Tarantula over this set and Scarlet Violet. Murkrow, Spider Ops. Bro, this spider is everywhere, bro. What's going on? Persimian, Reversal Energy. Well, well, well. These last two packs have been really good as far as playables go. Reversal Energy is an absolutely massive card. If you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, i.e. you're behind in the game, and it's attached to an evolution Pokemon that doesn't have a rule box, so Pokemon EX and Pokemon V don't count, then this card provides every type of energy and three energy at a time. Your Gardevoir EX wants to take the knockout, but one psychic energy isn't gonna cut it? Use Gardevoir's Shining Arcana to draw two more cards, find the reversal energy, attach it because you're behind on prizes, and take the knockout for the win. It might just be an energy card, but that energy card is gonna birth some of the coolest TCG moments over the next couple of years. We have a reverse Mankey, we got a Fighting Orlate. I don't know how to say that. And we got the Oracorio. This is the Oracorio that I was talking about a couple of packs ago. This one is by, it is by Haru Akasaka. It's actually a pretty good ability. Ardent Dancing. Once during your turn, you may heal 20 damage from your active evolution Pokemon. So you could use it to heal your Gardevoir in the Gardevoir EX deck to get one extra energy on it. But without many other applications, it's hard to justify playing this one. I was trying really hard to finish Scarlet Violet before this set came out. And the reason I didn't get it done is because I'm streaming it and I take forever. I do stream over at twitch.tv slash okjlove. And if you do want to watch me struggle through the main game, you can check it out over on the okjlove streams channel where I upload all past live streams. There's Dendra again. We got a Palisan. Raichu, still looking for that Luxray. Tarantula, absolutely everywhere. A Reverse Shinx with that ability, Big Raw. And a Serilege, Cer Serilege. I'm more of an Armor Rouge fan, not gonna lie. The Cer Serilege, Serilege, nah, man. Give me the dude with the big Mega Man gun any day of the week. Jigglypuff, we got a Tadbulb, that's a nice card. This one's by Tikamatsuno. That's a very nice illustration of Tadbulb. Giraffe, Corva Squire, Jet Energy, okay, this. Might just be a simple looking ball of energy, but boy, oh boy, this is going to be a very powerful card, especially in Lost Zone decks. Jet Energy might only provide one colorless, but when you attach it to a bench Pokemon, it switches with your active. Greninja's sitting on your bench, it needs one more energy to attack, so you attach it, switch it with your active, and knock out the Ralts for the win. Perfect. Bosses Orders. Hey, I can put some new Bosses Orders in my deck. Gets this. I had an absolute moment. People called me a fake fan, and then I realized... I wasn't paying attention during my favorite gen or one of my favorite gens, gen five. It's a pretty cool boss's orders. It's better than the Sander. Do not at me. Boss's orders is still a fantastic card. And even though it came out in Sword and Shield, which was a few years ago, they keep reprinting it because it is still standard legal. So Pineco, so your boss's orders, sorry. They're still relevant. Even if they're printed from a few years ago, you can still play them. As long as they're still in regulation, which they are, Tinker Tough. That's a really long way to say it. 
Bravery Charm. We're hitting all the playables now. Do you remember in my Scarlet Violet opening, I said Drifloon was going to be really good? Well, here's the reason why. The basic Pokemon that Bravery Charm is attached to gets plus 50 HP. In Gardevoir EX, this lets you attach just that extra little bit of energy more to take a knockout and claim the win. Remember that Psychic Embrace places two damage counters for every Psychic Energy you attach. So five Psychic Energy means 10 damage counters. And when you multiply that by 30 for Drifloon's Balloon Blast, you get a 300 damage knockout on Lugia. Beautiful stuff. And remember that tool cards are now different to item cards, so you cannot Irida for a Bravery Charm. That is not allowed. We have a Snowbar, a Culver Squire, and we have a Gyarados. This is a really nice illustration, actually. I stumbled upon this in Snow Hazard, and I just think it's really nice. Yuya Oka. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're exploding a boat or if they're charging up Hyper Beam or something, but this is wicked. This has very strong, like, early 2000s Pokemon card sort of vibes. I just I just think it's really cool. If I can walk away from this with a play set or like three, at least three cards of like, I don't know, maybe the Jet Energy and the Reversal and a Luxray, I'm gonna be really happy. Quaxley, Tinkatink, Pinkachin, Flamingo with the ability Insta Flock. When you play this Pokemon from your hand, your bench during your turn, you may search your deck for up to three Flamingo, reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. I think there's a flying type deck, Wings of Fury. I think I've been calling it Wings of Fury. I'm I'm pretty sure it's not Wings of Fury, but I've been saying that. It says it right there. What are you looking at? Paldean Taurus, Skip Loom with the ability Drifting Dodge. Actually, I think this is decent. If any damage is done to this Pokemon by attacks, flip a coin if heads prevent that damage. Maybe it's not Skimp Blue. Maybe it's Jumpluff that has the good ability. We'll see. I'm pretty sure Jumpluff's in this set. Reverse Persimian by Jerky. Glamora. And a Copraja EX, who just seems to get a card in every set. I don't know what it is about. Copraja has always got a... It's always, always got a card. Sword and Shield is like in every set. And it's back in Paldea Evolve. This Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. And the attack Nose Quake. 260, which is a lot of damage. This is like also does 30 damage to each of your benched Pokemon. That seems bad. So anytime an attack does damage to your Pokemon as well, it just leaves it really vulnerable. Especially deck against decks like Lost Zone. Like the Sableye just comes in and beasts. That's the Sableye from Lost... Origin, for those of you that aren't familiar, a really powerful card that's only going to get a little bit weaker. I was dominating in this format. Actually, he hasn't really won that many tournaments, Lost Zone. I think we've got had Gardevoir 1 EYC, and then Mew and like Arc Giratina won a couple of regionals, which is kind of odd. Arctabax, which gets completely skipped over in that Bax Caliber engine. Giacomo, don't say that. It's Giacomo. Pikachu. I don't even know this was a card. Look at that. By Okacheke. Oh, hey, Okacheke did a Pikachu card. Where have I been? I have actually been sleeping. This is the town from the game. Larry's Gym. I'm like 90% sure that is the town that Larry's Gym is from. I can't remember the town because all the towns, their names are unmemorable, but Larry's memorable. Reverse Pikachu. A Bramblin. There's another art rare. That's by So So. This card is bossing. Look at that. That's fantastic. You don't even need to like Bramblin to say, hey, you know what? This card is really cool. And a Jump Pluff. Okay, there we go. Drifting Dodge. If any damage is done to this Pokemon by attacks, flip a coin if heads prevent that damage. And the attack Fluffy Breeze. This attack also does 30 to one of your opponents benched. Why did I think that was good? This is a pretty generous amount of hits. Some people like to say that the early boxes of uh, booster boxes that TPCI send out are stacked, but... I disagreed, but now I'm a believer. We got Super Rod. This card right here is proof that the influencer boxes are stacked because this card is busting. Do you guys remember Ordinary Rod? Pretty ordinary looking card, eh? Well, Super Rod is the new and improved version. Super Rod lets you shuffle up to three in any combination of Pokemon and basic energy cards from your discard pile into your deck. Let's say your Manaphy's just been knocked out and you need it to survive the next turn. Simply play Super Rod to shuffle it back into your deck. Be careful putting other Pokemon and energy into your deck here unless you need them. You don't want to clutter your deck for no reason. Then all you've got to do is play the level ball to put it back into your hand and bang! You're gaming. And the absolute best part of Super Rod is that it means I don't have to play Clara in turns where I need to get my Manaphy back. We have Love Disc, a Snowbar. That's actually pretty cool. That one is by Tadakatsu. We got a Honchkrow. Sudowoodo. This is nice too. This one's by Jerky. Jerky's a really cool artist that debuted, I believe, in V-Star Universe. And they've been a recurring artist since. Grusha, my beloved, but not Iono, who I really need. Sudowoodo. This is a really nice card. Illustrated by Jerky. I'm not going to do it. I, I want to do the bit, but I'm not going to do it. We have... Giacomo. Really hoping that was an Ino. And Squawkabilly EX. Hey, this is a that was a really good pack. 
because Squawk Ability is a very, very good new card that's going to see a lot of play. Squawk Ability's ability, Squawk and Seize, hey, I'm squawking here, can only be used during your first turn. It lets you discard your hand and draw six new cards, which is perfect if you're playing a deck like Arceus that occasionally bricks. Seeing six new cards on your first turn is indispensable and will bring you right into the game. This box is Boston. I'm going to run out of space at this rate. I think we got another hit in here. We got Slacker. There's the Pikachu, but just the regular art. Kufant. Krogonk. Shifty little guy. Flamigo in that Wings of Fury deck. Bombardier. Skip Loom. I thought it was good, but it's not really. Super Ride. We got two now, baby. Let's go. We got a Marrow. Really nice sketching. Not sketching. Shading. Really nice shading across the belly. This one is by Saino Misaki. Really cool artist. And a Tingaton, which is actually a really nice card. I, I keep saying it. it's by Korki Saito, so I'm super biased. Gather materials. You must discard a card from your hand in order to use this ability once during your turn. You may draw three cards. Now, if that was a basic or like a stage one Pokemon, that would be really strong. But because it's a stage two, you got to work so hard to get this draw support. But because you're probably not seeing it until like turn three or turn four, it's a liability on the board. Turn two, you're probably getting knocked out by a Greninja if you don't have a Manaphy down. I can't see this being that great just yet, but it has potential. I just feel like that would have been better if it was on a stage one. But if it was on a stage one, it would have been OP. So it makes sense. That's one of the things with the Pokemon training card game there are a lot of cards that are like oh that could be good if the reality of it is that not every card can be great for the game to be balanced there can't be too many strong cards because then the meta just ends up being too complicated so it's at this weird point where i was thinking about this before i started filming the video oh, let's talk about therapeutic energy before i move on to my little rant here this card provides one colorless energy but more importantly it helps you recover from being asleep confused or paralyzed. Pokemon like Snorlax are really susceptible to this and when they're asleep, they can't retreat. But if you play therapeutic energy, you recover from the status ailment, allowing you to retreat and then attack on your next turn. So as you can see, that's three special energies that are pretty strong. If they put any more in, it was gonna be an issue. Choice Belt, I didn't know this got a new illustration or got a new print. This is the same old Choice Belt, but with a new illustration. So that's, that's in a way, that's kind of cool. This is the same Choice Belt from Brilliant Stars, but just with a new art. We have Pomo, Tropius, Paldean Taurus, do we have something spicy? We have a rare, it's Tinkaton again. So I guess the issue is they have to limit how many new strong and powerful and meta defining cards come out. That's why there's only like three good special energies that have come out. If they put too many, then the meta gets a bit too complicated. At the moment, there's like three or four really strong archetypes. So when I say archetype, that's stuff like Lugia, Mew, Lost Zone, and Gardevoir, those are archetypes. There's sort of variants of each of those decks, but for the most part, the lead Pokemon Gardevoir is the archetype. If there's too many, if there's like eight or 10 like tier one archetypes, then the game gets too complicated. So they kind of limit it how many good cards they print in these new sets. We have the Lavata, a Sneasel Reverse, and a Rabska. Having said that, that doesn't mean that the game is like overly simplified. It's just that there's a really good point where each round feels competitive. You never know who you're going to really play or what you're going to really face against when you go to a tournament or a league challenge or a cut, um, but it's diverse enough that, yeah, you're always having like unique interactions and competitive matches. It doesn't feel stale like the last format did with Silver Tempest. We have the Bramblegast, the Serral Edge, not a big fan, the Superior Energy Retrieval. This is a fantastic card. It's even better than the last Energy Retrieval. It's superior. All right, now pay attention here. You can only use this card if you discard two other cards from your hand. Then you can put four basic energy cards from your discard into your hand, but you cannot put the cards you discarded back into your hand because that would be broken. This card is especially powerful in Bax Calibre decks. Can you see why? It lets you thin your hand, but more importantly, it lets you put four energy back into it. And with Bax Calibre's ability super cold, you're able to place it anywhere. You can see why this is so strong. I'm pretty happy because I'm finding a lot of playables now. And the Tyranitar, that's a really nice illustration. That's by Hungry Clicker. So you might be familiar with Hungry Clicker. They illustrated the Lucario V-Star. There was a promo in the Crown Zenith ETBs. They're a very popular artist over on Twitter. So if you like seeing video game characters illustrated in cool, interesting ways, go and check out Hungry Clicker on Twitter. You will not be disappointed. I really want to see a Chien Pao. That's going to just be the icing on top here. We've got Dano, Sandy Gars, Tarantula, spiders everywhere, man. Murkrow, the Tinkertuff, Pormo, Gotharita, Voltorb, Love Disc, and Baxcalibur. We got two of them. That's fantastic. This is a stacked box. I'm having a good time here. If you are interested in playing the Chien Pao deck, the whole interaction there is the Chien Pao takes the water out of your deck into your hand and the Baxcalibur lets you move it around. So you really need to find the Chien Pao there. But even if you only find like three or four Baxcalibur, you're going to be having a pretty good time. Shrudel. Phalanx, Faulkner, Surviper, Pyro, 
Artisan. Okay, this is one of the new stadiums that's actually pretty good. I am not sold, but supposedly it's doing good in Japan. Once during each player's turn, that player may search their deck for a basic Pokemon without a rule box and put it onto their bench. So if you brick starting up, but you've got this stadium, at least you've got a way to get more Pokemon on the bench, but they only go to the bench, not to your hand. The downside is that your opponent can use this stadium too. I am by no means an expert. I look at cards, I think about their applications and whether they're going to be good or not. And then I just make a quick gut feel call. I don't think anybody really gets it right first go when, especially when there's like a new meta being established, but I don't know. I just don't see Artisan being that great. Paldean Wooper. I'm not the biggest fan of stadium cards that help your opponent. Like Mesa Goza is another one that's just not that fantastic because if Lugia is playing it into Lost Zone and they play it on their first turn, the Lost Zone player is absolutely chilling, especially if they're all heads and get that Pokemon that they want. Luminous Energy. This is one of the new, oh, I lied. There's four good new energies in this set. Luminous Energy basically functions as any energy type, but only if there are no other special energy attached to that Pokemon. It's a great card that can be any type of energy. For example, you need one Lightning Energy to attack with Dragonite, but you're stuck with this water. You find the Luminous Energy, attach it, it functions as Lightning, and you're able to knock out the Zacian. I felt absolutely betrayed by Lugia when I played it to Brisbane Regionals, so as long as Lugia is not getting better, I'm having a good time. I'm a hater like that. Relor. Tad Bowl, but I like the other illustration better. Fridgy backs. So I think we've gotten two now, and I want to see at least four, because you want to run four of those in your deck, and maybe three of the backs caliber. The Tandem Mouse, Crocolore. Set up on turn one is very important. Graphite, cool card, cool Pokemon. Satitan, not the biggest fan. Dunsparce. Florigato. Do we have a Miascarada? We got a boss's orders. That's two of the new boss's orders. If you just started playing, that's a card you're almost always gonna need. So seeing it in Palde evolved as a like a rare card that you're most likely gonna find like one or two of in a box is very helpful. It saves you going and buying singles, nimble, electrode, graphite. There it is again. Who is that by? None other than Sorchido Gunjima, who's got one of the deepest portfolios across the sword and shield block. Another super rod. I think that's two or three. I definitely think that's three. It's at least two. Love disc. Snova. Come on, man. Superior energy retrieval. We got two of them now or three. I know it's at least two. Could be three. Another Sudowoodo, definitely three of those. Pelipa, Choice Belt. There we go. <laughs> Tinker Tough. And a Neuven EX. Okay, so this is another playable card. I don't know how good it's going to be. I think you need to play it in Reggie Drago. Where are the Chen Pao at, man? I need my Chen Pao. Mistrevis, love to see it. Sneasel. Gothita, come on. This is the Chen Pao pack, come on. Mischief, Honchcrow. Calamitous Wasteland. Primate, Dino. Chen Pao! Hey, there it is. I told you we we're going to see it. Chen Pao EX. And we got the gold as well, which is nice. I was just looking at this earlier today and I was like, I wonder, is the SAR cooler than the, the gold? The gold is really nice. I think it goes well with Chen Pao being a white ice type Pokemon. Okay, strap in. Chen Pao's ability, Shivery Chill, lets you search your deck for up to two basic water energy and put them into your hand, but only if it's in the active. You can see where this is going with Baxcalibur. And the attack Hail Blade does 60 damage for each energy you discard from it. So if you discard six energy, you're hitting for 360. The plan is simple. Play the Chien Pao to your bench, then evolve the Fridgy Backs with Rare Candy into Baxcalibur. Find a way to put Chien Pao in the active with Switch. Search for two water with Chien Pao's ability, Shivery Chill. Then use Baxcalibur's ability, Super Cold, attaching all water to the Chien Pao and attack with Hail Blade for the knockout. Just make sure to discard the water energy when you're done. You guys are 100% gonna say that this is a rigged box. I didn't, I just was saying it for the bit. This was the Chien Pao pack and it just happened to be. Do we have another Chien Pao? Imagine. Oh no, just Sableye. Sableye, my beloved, not the Lost Origin version, but I still love the little fella. Now I can't remember how the hit rates work with Paldea Vold. I'm sure you guys have sussed it out over the course of this video. I don't know if that means no more EXs or, or Hyper Rares or whatever. Maybe no more SARs or SIRs, but we'll see. For Coco, Paldea and Wooper, I'm going to I'm gonna keep believing. We only found one Iono, which I'm really disappointed about because I wanted to see more because I need four, but we'll see what happens. The Dunsparce. I know that this card is actually going to be quite decent. I also keep getting debated by this thinking it's just regular Dunsparce because I didn't know that it had an Evo in, in uh, Scarlet and Violet. We got a Nimble. We got a Bravery Charm. So we're going to a few of those, at least two. This is a Reverse Hollow and Orthworm. I am not a fan of Orthworm. Something about this Pokemon just rubs me the wrong way. I'm not a hater. You don't have to love every Pokemon. And Orthworm is in my do not like list. Where is the Luxray? Just quietly, I found that many double rares and still no Luxray. We got Rookie D, Pikachu, Slackoth, Zuelus, Mouse Hold, 
Satiden or Chatiden, you pick. There's the, he's rigging it. It's rigged. He's just, he's doing it for the bit and it's playing off. This man has the hot hand, Luxray. Okay, this is busted. Luxray can be played straight to your bench with the ability Swelling Flash if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. It's another one of those comeback cards that pairs perfectly with Reversal Energy. Simply play it to your bench, attach the Reversal Energy, find a switch into the active, and deal 180 damage with Wild Charge. A fantastic attack against Pokemon that are weak to lightning. This box has ticked all of my boxes, so I, I'm a happy little trainer. What's left for little old J-Love? I am extremely grateful. I don't want to come across as whining because I'm not finding commons and uncommons. I'm very grateful. This has been a huge help. So a big thank you again to Pokemon for gifting us this box for Coco, Bramblem. I'm just always left wanting more. And I think everybody is when they open up Pokemon cards. Kfant, Corviknight, da 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 Dunsparce, Pupitar, Pyroar, Sandy gas. That's not bad. That is by all. So that explains it. The dude is absolutely goaded on a playground. Oh yeah, it's a sand, it's a sandy gas in a sand pit in a playground. How fitting. It's fantastic. And a slow king EX. Well, well, well. She said this has actually been a really good box. All the ultra rares, the SRs, etc., haven't been like playable. Or I guess Jim Pow. Jim Pow was. Uh, but slow king EX looks fantastic. You cannot stick your nose up at these terror types. Not the most playable of cards, but still just really nice. Like you'd put that in your binder. And if you're a, a Gen 1 or Gen 2 fan, you would be g off on that. That's fantastic. This booster box was absolutely busting. I don't know what I'm going to do about finding playables before NAIC because I'm going to be in America from the 9th of June. I'm heading to Card Party, the convention that Deep Pocket Monster aka Pat Flynn is running. So if you're going to be in California, I think tickets are still on sale. I'm going to come down and say, hey, I'll be there and I'll be there to say, hey, Fridgy backs. People aren't playing this one that much, but because it's got 70 HP, it's less susceptible to lost mine attacks. So I think we might see some decks run the 70 HP Fridgy backs instead of the 60 HP one. Time will tell. All right, moment of truth. Last possible chance for just a regular Shampoo EX. Can you make it happen? Fletchling, Voltorb, Clavel. Can we at least get another Iono? Dunsparce, Fletchinder, Toxicroak, Oranguru, the Great Great Ball, Rabscar, and a spirit tomb, which is actually decent. This is going to see a lot of play because it's of ability better than misfortune. Basic Pokemon V in play, both yours and your opponents, have no ability. So if you're a Mew player, be very scared of this deck because your Genesex aren't going to be able to fusion strike system anymore. All right, hit speed run time. Two Noibat, three Pineco, three Dunsparce, two Duh 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 two Flamigo, four Murkrow, one Frigibax, two Frigibax, two Baxcalibur, four Akorio, really tough, spirit tomb, mustard Luxray, and a nice Pikachu. One Iono, dual Giacomo, two Grusha, Saguaro, two Dendra, two Buster's Orders, therapeutic energy, jet energy, reversal energy, two luminous energy, three Super Rod, two Superior energy, which Two choice spell, two bravery charm, Artisan, Bodai and Weeper, Sending Us, Bramblin', Bushin, Copperja, Noivin, Slow King, Squawk in here, GU EX, not Iono, also not Iono, Slow King EX, GU EX Special Iron, and a Gold GM Power EX. Beautiful. If you want to see these cards in action, make sure to check out Busted over at twitch.tv slash OKJLove, where we exhibit live TCG tabletop gameplay. You can watch old episodes of Busted over at the OKJLove streams channel. But until then, guys, take care and thank you so much for watching. Peace.